The fjordlands of New Zealand are one of the most beautiful places on Earth. Yet fascinatingly, despite its temperate climate being perfect for all sorts of different terrestrial mammals, the entirety of New Zealand itself has no native land mammals beyond simply bats. But New Zealand does have a lot of different invasive mammals, with by far its largest being the moose. Moose themselves are native to the temperate and subarctic climates of both northern North America and also northern Eurasia. So how did they get across the equator all the way to New Zealand, and how are they even surviving in such a vastly different habitat? Well, really, despite the plant life and the seasons being vastly different in New Zealand compared to their native range, mooses themselves are incredibly generalistic herbivores and can be very adaptable. The fjordlands specifically are actually a fairly ideal temperature for these mooses, and their geography is quite similar to that of the inside passage of Alaska, where moose is still in some areas areas thrive. But that raises the question you're probably asking, how the heck did these mooses get all the way across the world in the first place? Well, it starts off with how most invasive species get from one location to another, humans. With New Zealand's climate being ideal for all sorts of different large mammals, despite none being present on the island, the first Europeans who arrived decided to come up with the idea of introducing a multitude of different ungulates to the island, specifically so people could hunt them. A multitude of different deer species as a whole were introduced, not just to act as a food source, but also to bring in hunters from all over the world, in turn boosting New Zealand's economy. So with no predators on the island and tons of different ungulates to choose from, everything from white-tailed deer to American elk and even a few mooses were all brought over to the New Zealand islands. Still, despite New Zealand having the ideal climate for these ungulates to thrive, the first group of mooses that were brought over back in 1900 consisted of about four individuals, of which all of them died within eight years. Originally, more were going to be introduced in 1900, but unfortunately a lot of them died during transit. Because of this, a second attempt was made in 1910, where a total of 10 mooses were introduced to the fjordlands of New Zealand. The fjordlands themselves are a fairly remote place where these mooses would not end up disturbing people, and because of that they were able to reproduce at a fairly sustainable rate. Over time, these mooses would begin to spread from island to island throughout the fjordlands. Their spread wasn't actually aided by people, but instead by the fact that these large mammals could actually swim. Funnily enough, with so many other deer species being found throughout the nation, all of which are much easier to access and hunt than these mooses, the mooses really weren't sought after that much. In addition to this, the fjordlands themselves are incredibly hard to access, with the islands mainly being accessible by either seaplane or by boat. But for both better and worse, not that many people were really that interested in hunting down these mooses, especially with how much effort they'd have to go to in order to find them. Believe it or not, mooses in their native range could actually be quite cryptic, so once you put them in an incredibly large area that isn't even their native range and is incredibly hard to access, these mooses, while continuing to grow their numbers, somehow against all odds essentially went under the radar. By the late 1930s, after a few trophy hunting expeditions, most people simply assumed that the mooses of New Zealand went extinct. Regardless, many people underestimated just how fast these mooses would reproduce, and also just how cryptic these mooses would truly become. For that reason, mooses were still sighted at an increasing rarity all the way up until the 1950s. Yet despite sightings continuing after this point, the New Zealand government officially declared them extinct in 1952, with this being the last confirmed and universally recognized photo of two mooses in New Zealand. In spite of this, the mooses were not forgotten, as many people still wondered if they were out there after their last confirmed sighting, and because of that, many people would go looking for them. But there was two problems with this, one of which is that mooses are almost entirely solitary, with the only exception being when they're mating or when mothers are raising their calves. This makes it so that the mooses themselves are fairly spread out throughout whichever habitat they are living in. And what made these mooses even harder to find was the introduction of red deer to the fjordlands. Red deer themselves are obviously significantly smaller than the mooses, but in turn they breed at a much faster rate and they also prey upon a lot of the same plant species that many juvenile moose would. Both these factors combined made searching for these mooses an incredibly hard task, but still people would find evidence of their presence long after 1950. By the 1970s, more and more people were going deep into the fjordlands mainly in order to hunt the red deer. Red deer themselves do actually pose a threat to the 
the native wildlife of New Zealand as they displace much of the plant life which many of the endemic bird species rely on for their own survival. Also, venison tastes good. At least to me, though, maybe I'm just a weirdo. The point is, during this time period, many people were actually reporting seeing mooses on multiple occasions. One person even claimed to have shot a moose, though the body was never retrieved. But while no body was retrieved, a pair of shedded antlers from what was certainly a moose were collected during this time. In addition to this, even moose footprints were photographed, and multiple examples of bark being stripped down by what could have only been a moose was recorded. This would only lead to more speculation and fascination about if the mooses were still out there and how many of them are really left. Even though the general public would mostly forget about this, the fascination amongst hunters and nature enthusiasts alike would lead to a bounty being placed on the mooses in the 1990s. And despite multiple people going out searching for these mooses, it would only really yield one result, that being this cryptic photo which may or may not be a moose. Yet even though many people lost hope in these large mammals still being out in the fjordlands just waiting to be rediscovered, they actually were more or less rediscovered. In 2001, while some hunters were looking for the mooses, they actually did find a hair sample, which was later DNA tested and confirmed to have actually came from a moose. The same thing would also happen again in 2005, but still no confirmed photos were to come out of these animals in the early 2000s. This of course raises the question of if these mooses are still alive today. To be honest, with all the evidence, I think it's a pretty safe bet to say they still are. With multiple sightings having occurred as recently as 2025 of these large deers being sighted off of boats, and even off of helicopters, I think it's a pretty safe bet to say that these large mammals are still out there. Some of these sightings themselves are actually quite credible, with them even being made by biologists and hunters which would certainly know what a moose looks like. Regardless, with no 100% confirmed photo of a moose in New Zealand in 2025, the New Zealand moose is still technically declared extinct. But is this a shame or is this for the best? In actuality, the mooses themselves are still an invasive species and they still do bring a multitude of different harmful effects to the plant life of New Zealand which indirectly affects a lot of New Zealand's native animal species as a result. In actuality, if these mooses were to be rediscovered, they would likely be hunted to extinction, due to the harmful effects they bring onto the ecosystem. And even if they weren't hunted to extinction, they would likely be forced back into captivity where they, in a way, more or less belong. By having these large ungulates remain undiscovered, they are able to live out their last days in peace. And we could say for a matter of fact, that's highly unlikely for this moose population to continue to grow much more in the future. The fjordlands themselves are an incredibly huge place and the odds of these mooses being able to continuously meet up with each other is incredibly low based on how sparse their population must be. On top of that, the population itself is likely heavily inbred, meaning that the population is likely not as healthy or sustainable as that of the mooses found in their native range. Regardless, it is undeniable that it's incredibly fascinating how the legend of the New Zealand moose has been able to carry on for over a hundred years now, and there's even a small chance it could continue to go on for many more years to come. Now if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like and subscribe, because I try to make animal mini documentaries every single week, and I need your money. With that being said, hopefully I'll see you real soon. Goodbye.